I'm Kevin Werbeck, and this is Great Question, where Warden professors like me answer your burning questions. Our topic today, cryptocurrency and fintech. What is blockchain? What kinds of applications will we see for blockchain technology? Blockchain is a variety of different mechanisms. Uh, I call it a family of technologies for a decentralized network to be trusted. You can trust the information that is recorded on a ledger of data that uh, is shared across that entire network without having to trust any particular actor. You don't have to trust, say, the bank that is recording how much money you have uh, or any specific entity. You're able to trust the system as a whole. What is the importance of cryptocurrency and what does the future hold for cryptocurrency? So there are now uh, dozens uh, and, and by some count really thousands of cryptocurrency tokens out there that use similar approaches to Bitcoin and they serve many different purposes. Some digital assets as we call them are designed like Bitcoin to be money. They're designed for payments. Others are designed to facilitate applications because these aren't just static records. These are networks of computers that are maintaining the uh, assets on the ledger and they can be programmable. You can write literally software applications across the network using these digital assets. Uh, so what does the future hold? Well, I don't know exactly, uh, but we're starting to see the development of uh, some of these application areas. One big one is called DeFi or decentralized finance, building financial instruments, uh, things like exchanges and loans and insurance and derivatives, all based on these cryptocurrencies at the bottom. And then what we call smart contracts, software-based applications, automatically acting on those assets, again, all across these distributed blockchain networks. That's one example of some of the innovation we're seeing, and there's lots more happening in other areas. What do you think of mining cryptocurrency? Is it possible to mine crypto using less energy? This is a huge topic of discussion right now. Mining is basically the way that new cryptocurrency gets created on the Bitcoin network and some other major networks. And it's also the process of securing the network uh, because in order to secure the network, there need to be people running computers that are validating all the transactions. And so Bitcoin creates an incentive. The incentive is if you devote enough computing power to this, you may actually be selected. And if you get selected to be the one who adds the next block of transactions, you get free Bitcoin. That's actually how Bitcoin gets created. So this creates this really beneficial incentive system that has led to Bitcoin being so secure. The problem is it also creates tremendous overhead. The mining is expensive, it slows down the network, and it potentially uses so much energy that cryptocurrencies are now a, a potentially significant contributor to climate change. And so there's a lot of experimentation now with alternate mechanisms. Not all cryptocurrencies use mining. Ether, which is the second most valuable cryptocurrency, is in the process of transitioning to a different approach called proof of stake, which doesn't have the same energy consumption. So we're seeing a lot of pressure to move away from these mining approaches. Will the government allow decentralized currencies like Bitcoin to continue? First of all, it's not necessarily entirely up to governments. Uh, Bitcoin is fundamentally decentralized. There are more than 10,000 nodes all around the world. Uh, no one government can shut down that global network. However, governments can clamp down on their citizens transacting with those networks. And we're starting to see that uh, in uh, some countries uh, which have restrictive governments for a variety of reasons. That being said, most governments are not trying to kill Bitcoin. They're not trying to kill cryptocurrencies in general. Um, this is an innovative technology. It's a technology that has lots of risks and dangers and abuses, and governments are concerned about that. Uh, but fundamentally, it's a new way to transact. And for, so potentially, it's a way to do the things that governments want to do. Many governments, in fact, most of the world's central banks are now experimenting with what are called central bank digital currencies, using blockchain-like technology for their money, for their actual fiat currency, like the US dollar and the euro. So basically what is happening is that regulators are looking at issues they're concerned about. For example, they're concerned about money laundering. 
They're concerned about fraud and scams when you don't have regulation of the transactions. Uh, and they are looking at how those policies can be addressed consistent with the technology. They are concerned appropriately about ensuring that those goals are met. How do NFTs gain value? Okay, NFTs are non-fungible tokens. So we go back to cryptocurrencies. Uh, if we're talking about something like money, that's fungible. One $20 bill is the same as any other $20 bill. Uh, you can exchange one for another. That's true of most cryptocurrencies, but it's technically possible to create what's called a non-fungible token. So for example, if I have something of value, like a work of art, you can't say to me, well, okay, you've got a Picasso and I've got uh, something that was scrawled in crayon by my 10 year old daughter. They're both works of art, right? So let's just exchange them. One piece of art is as good as any other piece of art. You wouldn't take that deal, right? The Picasso is worth a lot more. Um, and even if I took a picture of the Picasso, that's not worth as much. That's not the Picasso. So NFTs are a way of cryptographically ensuring that one digital asset represented on the blockchain is unique. You can be sure that that is the only one of that asset uh, on that blockchain in that network. Uh, and so the question how they gain value, well, that's also the answer. They gain value through scarcity. Why is the Picasso worth something? Because there are only so many of them. Uh, and you can be sure that Picasso is not going to draw anymore because he's dead. Uh, so with NFTs, it's possible to create this artificial scarcity around digital assets. Uh, but that also means they are not guaranteed to gain value. Uh, artwork can go up, artwork can go down. Baseball cards can go up, baseball cards can go down. And frankly, with NFTs, we saw a bubble, a frenzy of activity just because the technology was so cool that led to prices that were just frankly, in some cases, crazy. So yes, NFTs can be valuable. And by the way, they can use for, be used for many things other than artwork. But don't think that just because you have an NFT that in any way you are guaranteed to have something of value. How do you feel about meme stocks? Well, I love memes and I love stocks, but I don't love meme stocks. There is nothing wrong with people getting excited about a meme stock. Uh, and there's certainly nothing wrong with the little guy banding together um, to uh, be successful and take advantage of an opportunity uh, as opposed to the big hedge fund. However, there are a lot of people who got hurt and there are a lot of people who simply had no idea what risk they were taking on. And there were opportunities for people to abuse the system. We don't know yet exactly what happened in the GameStop situation, but there are lots of concerns that this wasn't necessarily a purely bottom-up fair situation. All of that comes back to uh, the concept that I always start with, which is trust. And trust is the essence of blockchain, as I've talked about, but trust is the essence of really any market. It's certainly the essence of traditional financial markets. And so we need to, keep looking at what it takes to ensure that there is trust in these markets. Absolutely, the innovation is great and opening up possibilities to more people, that's great as well. Uh, but it needs to happen in a way that the benefits really spread to everyone as opposed to purely being driven by hype and purely dri being driven by fans and really easy to abuse. Thanks for submitting your questions. You can follow me on Twitter at KWERB, that's K-W-E-R-B or you can go to my personal website at werback.com.